thing you notice about my cousin Millie is the way her eyes gleam. She looks as if she's trying not to burst out laughing. She's full of laughter and jokes and ideas. One time she said, What say we play Tarzan down by the river? So for that whole summer we did. Lots of other people joined in to be crocodiles and headhunters. Another time she said, What say we write a book? And we did. All about two girls who get shipwrecked and have to build their own hut and grow vegetables. They tame a wild goat for milk and make clothes out of the skins of wild animals. At first I said I didn't think girls could do it, but Millie said, they'd have to. Then there was the time Millie said, what say we put on a concert? So we got together all the kids we liked and made up plays and songs and dances. We made posters to put in shops and charged everyone 10 cents to come in. I think the whole town came in the end. But we had our best idea of all last Saturday, Rodeo Day. It's our favourite day of the year. Our grandma runs a hotel in the town. Millie and I go there and hang around on the veranda and watch the cowboys coming and going. They're big and sun-tanned and they wear riding boots and Stetson hats and fancy carved leather belts. Lots of people come from out of town just to watch the events. Rodeo week is a big week for us, but we pretend it annoys us. We look down our noses at all the visitors and the big men, and especially the boys. It's easier to look down our noses at the boys, the way they show off, walking along other people's fences as if they own the place. I hate boys, said Millie. So do I, I said. Worse than poison. They're all right when they're babies. Up to about five, I said. I'd like to get in a fight with those ones over there, Millie said. I bet they're going to ride the calves, lucky pigs. And then right at the same time, Millie and I turned to each other and said, I know. What say we... And we both burst out laughing. What were you going to say, said Millie? What say we dress up as boys and go in the calf riding, Millie finished for me. So that was what we set out to do. Our grandma keeps a pile of old clothes in the hotel laundry. Straight after lunch, we locked ourselves in there to dress up. Half an hour later, there we were, scuffing along in the dust towards the showground. Our hair was hidden in boys' straw hats left over from the concert. We had on tartan shirts, jeans and our feet were bare. We felt dusty and tough and free. When we got inside the gate, we went straight to the shed where you enter the events. We put our names down for the calf riding. We didn't use our real names. I was Hoss McKenzie and Millie was Chuck Weston. That's your real name? The man asked Millie and I nearly fainted. Of course, said Millie, hooking her thumbs in her jean pockets. We went and sat on the rails for a while and watched the buck jumping and wild steer riding. Then we wandered around the sideshows and stalls. We had just enough money for some candy floss, but we looked at the things on the stalls and picked out what we'd choose if we won a prize. Millie wanted a china cat with diamond eyes. I wanted the same thing I've always wanted. A QP doll in a pink and gold dress to hang over my mirror. Suddenly the loudspeaker boomed out and we hung on to each other in fear. Would all boys entered in the calf riding line up at stall B at once? I've changed my mind, I said. You promised, said Millie. So off we went. There were only three other boys lined up. A man gave us our numbers and said, Hold on until you think you're going to come off, then run back here. We looked at our cards. Mine said, Hoss McKenzie, number two. Chuck Weston was on last, number five. I've done this plenty of times, said one of the other boys kindly. Just hang on with your knees and sort of lean with the rest of your body. It sounded easy. Let's go and have a look at the calves, said Millie. The calves' pen had high walls and we could only hear them mooing, moving around restlessly. We climbed the walls and looked down. I got scared then. You mean those are calves, I said. I felt sick. They looked more like bulls. Bulls with wild eyes. 
angry, terrified bulls. I didn't look at Millie. I jumped down and ran for my life. I didn't stop until I came to the parking lot away from the crowds. Then I laid down and cried because I was such a coward. I thought Millie might be trying to find me, but I didn't care. I was just thinking I'd sneak off home when a great roar went up from the crowd watching the calf riding. Then there was another, and another, bursting and dying away like waves. I ran back and pushed my way through the crowds to see, and sure enough, there was Millie. I mean, there was Chuck Weston hanging on with all his limbs to the wildest wild calf I've ever seen. The crowd went mad. No matter how that calf leaped or jerked or lurched or shied, he couldn't get rid of Chuck. Everyone just cheered and cheered. And when Chuck sat up and flung his left leg over the calf's head and landed on two feet, the roar was like thunder. Old Chuck Weston stood there in the ring for a moment, grinning all around. Then he pulled off his hat and the crowd gasped as a black ponytail fell into view. And what happened next? while well, people ran into the ring from all sides and carried my cousin off on their shoulders. They put her on the platform to take her prize, and someone said to her over the loudspeaker, how does it feel to win $10? And Millie said, it's good because now we can have a go on the sideshows. Who's we? the man said. Me and Hoss McKenzie, said Millie, and I think I was the only one in the whole showground who knew why she burst out laughing.